All right, so the next question says, please, sir, how do I stop impulse buying? I often buy things I don't need simply because they're on discount, and later I regret my actions. Awesome. Impulse buyers, you always regret the action. But you know why that thing always happens? It's because the money is always available. Right. The money is always in your pocket or it's in your wallet. And that's why you're making no purchases. Imagine you see something you want to buy along the road and then you don't have the money to buy it. What will you do? You admire it, admire it, admire it and say, hmm, I'll plan towards this thing. Mm -hmm. So that is the idea. So like I said in the beginning, when you have a budget, it defines what you do with money. Mm -hmm. So once the money comes in and it goes to the, the places where you have allocated it to go to, Impulse buying will come and it, you will choke it and it will go back to where it came from. You get so impulse people only fall for impulse buying. Teenagers only fall for impulse buying when the money is there doing nothing. Yeah. And same way nature abhors vacuum. Mm -hmm. Money abhors vacuum. So when there is some when there is something along the road that is so nice and there is money that you have not planned for, you will just online. use the money. Online. Yeah, online. I mean just look at Instagram, for example, you go to the explore page and you see a lot of nice things. And if you're a teenager, you're a girl, and then you see your fellow girls wearing some nice hair. And all of a sudden, your Instagram feed, feed is filled with hair, hair options. And you have one money that you have even been saving. All of a sudden, because you didn't have any plans to do with the savings, you just take it and go and buy hair. And then remember, when you buy these things without a plan, you definitely would regret it. Because any money that you don't plan for will plan itself. Right. And they definitely waste it. So the only way to avoid impulse buying is actually to make sure you have a budget where you have allocated that money for something. And you also can even allocate money for, you know, splurging. They call it splurging, yeah. right? Yeah. The money is just meant for just enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? So you are going along the road, you see something you like, that money is meant for it. And once the money is done, it's done. Mm -hmm. It's discipline. A budget disciplines you. When it's done, it's done. The other money have entered into an account that you don't even access. You don't have access to. Yeah. And so that's how you'll be able to break out of the Spirit of impulse buying. Awesome, thank you, sir. So we have one more question. All right. So when I was in primary six, my friend suggested we stop spending all our snacks money since we carry food to school. Wow. So the goal was to save. friend is a good friend. <laughs> the goal was to save, save it to SS three, mm. so that the money will be big mm. and we can use it to buy stuff for ourselves. But I did not keep up. I couldn't keep up after one week. Wow. Now I'm in SS two. And I wish I followed through. <laughs> so please help me. I'd like to know the best way to save money. Awesome. So I mean that that's a beautiful story. I mean, if, if you have a friend that is like this friend, I mean that's a very beautiful friend because and these are kind of people you need to surround yourself with. Because this thing about savings, money management, it works better when you are doing it with a group of people. So you're all accountable to each other. You know, but for someone who falls along the wayside, you know. It can happen. I mean, there are many things that can happen along the way. But if it's as a result of indiscipline, and maybe you, you just on your own became you know indisciplined about how you manage your money and you fell on the wayside, now that is wrong. And if you want to build yourself back, all you need to do is to follow the same process that we're talking about. Get a susu box, get a savings account, okay. and start to put money into a place where it can even be your mom, or your dad, or your sibling. Tell them, you know what, I'm going to be giving you this money. Don't give it to me, no matter how I beg you for it. Okay. Hold it and not give it to me back. Okay. And you always, or if your parents, if someone is giving you money, maybe at the end of every month they give you pocket money or whatever, you can even tell your parents or whoever is giving you money, your guardian, deduct this amount of money and save it for me. Okay. And then give me the rest. Okay. That way you are disciplined. Because we are all human beings. We struggle with these things sometimes. Even myself as someone who has been studying these things for years. Sometimes you get some money and then you, you start to think about something you've been planning to buy for a long time. But the truth is, it works with discipline. And like I always tell people, I study the rich and the wealthy people. I study people who have built wealth over time. And I go back in time to check what did they do. Now, once I realized what they, once I, once I understood what they did, I just follow them. So if it's discipline that I need, I stay disciplined. Because you have a goal. Your goal is to have a lot of money in your SS3 from primary six. That's six years. So imagine, for example, you put 2,000 naira or 1,000 naira every month for six years. How much is that? That's a lot of money. That's 12,000 times six. But that's for someone who does 1,000. And guess what? When you start doing the 1,000, all of a sudden you build the discipline for 2,000. Right. You get it. Okay, so but let's not use months because it's not okay, like this. Okay, okay. Every primary student, they get money every month. Right? It's every day. 
So like wow, that, that's yeah, even better, right? It's every day. So then when we used to have this give us twenty nine, there was one period. Which is not add value. Yeah, that is not <laughs> add value. But I just said she not spend it at all. Mm. So, they give us twenty nine. She can give me back in the house and we we'll go to school. Oh, nobody knew until one day. I thought I just lifted a photo frame in the house and such a little bit of Wow. Up to 500 naira. Wow. So every day, so you can just always tell us, since I'm, carrying, I'm already carrying food to school, all right, so this for people that are in secondary school or, you know, depending if this applies to you. So you're already carrying food, so you can say this out of my 100 naira every day, 200 naira every day, let me take half, let me take yeah. a quarter mm-hmm. and keep back and not to. So about sitting with your parents and siblings, so teenagers, I'm not comfortable with that because they feel like their parents will use the money. Our mom is that and they can use. Yeah. Some mommies were great. They'll tell you that your money is still with me or maybe during Christmas and they'll be like, that is not your money I buy you shoe. That is not your money I buy you uh, um, handbag or something like that. So, but it's not every parent yeah. that their teenagers yeah. can trust them money or Or even like that is me. Those ones will go and buy. <laughs> they go and buy something like one guy just like that. I'll tell you that this is not your money. Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy it. So, you just want to know. <laughs> Like you talked about apps mm-hmm. too, so there are some money apps that you can download if you already have assets. For kids, yes, money. there's one app called Hakonomy. Mm-hmm. There are many savings apps now that you can access. And thank God for technology. You have smartphones now. Some of them have smartphones. Mm-hmm. So you can actually access these apps and start to save little by little. Okay. You know, you don't have, you, you can now do it personally. You don't have to probably go to your guardian or your, if you don't trust that they will definitely do what you're telling them to do. You can use these apps and just keep your money there and then, you know, grow it from there. Yes, and there are some banks, like our banking system now that allows parents Keep to open savings, right? savings Keep for saving accounts, So you yeah. can um, encourage your parents to open one for you. You just know that that's where they're putting your money for you. They're no longer holding it for them. They say, but without my account, you can put my money there. Yeah, money. and I just want to add that mm-hmm. the idea around saving money mm-hmm. as a teenager, okay. you're not looking to build wealth fast. Mm-hmm. No. What you're looking to do first and foremost is to build discipline. You want to build discipline of how to manage money because that is the first point of call. When you're able to build that discipline, forget about the amount you're saving, whether it's five five naira every day. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is I'm disciplined with the little. Mm -hmm. And trust me, that is how God will open opportunities for you for more. And when you are telling your story, you will now be able to connect the dots. That those little, little steps I was taking, this is where it has gotten to. And I'm very honest with you, some of us, we didn't have the opportunity to make these decisions early because we didn't know, but you are, you are getting to know it now. And if you act on it, trust me, you'll be miles ahead of many of your mates by the time you get to your, your you know, adolescent age. Awesome. Awesome. So I hope we have learned a lot, right? I hope we have learned a lot. So please, do you have any final words? Because this is where we're rounding off this video. So do you have any last words? Like, okay, not last words. Do you have any words of encouragement before we turn on the camera? All right. So my last words or words of encouragement is this. As a teenager, as a young adult, you have time. Okay. I think there's one that, that, that's one thing that most teenagers, even while I was a teenager, I wasted a lot of time. I mean, a lot of time. I could have learned a lot of skills. I could have learned a lot of handiwork, but I wasted time. But you are hearing me right now. You have time, and that is your greatest asset. If someone is in is, is 50 years of age, the person has just 15 years to retire from active work. But if you are 15, you have 50 years that you can use to build the life you want before you retire. So your greatest asset is time. Forget about your mates who are clubbing. Forget about your mates who are who are chasing after after things that probably have no no value at the end of the day, no economic value. Focus. You might be the only one amongst hundred people doing trying to focus and you know following through this track. But the truth is, trust me. By the time you get there, all this ninety nine will look for you, and by then you'll be making that money you've been looking for, right. and it will be coming on its own because by then you'll have become so valuable that you'll be attracting money from different corners of the world. So awesome. please take that home. Time is an asset, and it's your greatest asset. Leverage it. And you make progress. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. So it's nice to be here. Thank you so much. And I hope we have learned a lot because personally, I, I learned a lot from everything that he has said to, today. And I hope you can say the same. So, but it, it doesn't stop here. If you have any questions, maybe there's something he said that somehow your thinking is not adding up in your head. So feel free 
talk to us in the comment section and we'll respond to you as soon as possible and if you like to see this video on this channel again also tell us in the comment section and of course like this video share it with your friends and yeah. do not forget to subscribe to the channel mm -hmm. very important so i'll see you guys at the next one take care thank you mr victor thank you thank you so much bye-bye <laughs>